Let's take a look at the least squares regression line in simple linear regression. Recall the assumed relationship between y and x, that y is equal to beta naught plus beta 1x plus epsilon. Beta naught and beta 1 are parameters that are typically unknown, and so we use sample data to find the estimated regression line. y hat, the predicted value of y, is equal to beta naught hat plus beta 1 hat times x. Beta naught hat is a statistic that estimates the parameter beta naught, and beta 1 hat is a statistic that estimates the parameter beta 1. The question now is, what are we going to use for beta naught hat and beta 1 hat? How are we going to choose them wisely so that we have a good regression line? First, let's talk about residuals for a moment. A residual is equal to the observed value minus the predicted value from the model. Every observation has a residual associated with it. So the residual for the ith individual in the sample is equal to the observed value of y for that individual minus the predicted value of y from the model. Here I've plotted out some data and drawn in the regression line. We don't yet know how to fit that line, but I do, and so I fit the line and drew it in here. The residuals are the signed vertical distances between the points and the line. Points below the line have negative residuals, and points above the line have positive residuals. But every point has a residual associated with it. This distance, plus the sign, negative for below the line, positive for above. The question now is, what is the best line? How are we going to go about fitting a well-fitting line through those points? Well, we're not simply going to do it by eye, we're going to come up with some mathematical criterion for doing so. How about one that minimizes the sum of the absolute value of the residuals? Or in other words, one that minimizes the sum of the total vertical distances between the points and the line. Well, that might seem like a reasonable choice, and it actually is a reasonable choice, and it's one that's sometimes used in statistics, but it is not the one that is commonly used. Beta naught hat and beta 1 hat are chosen to minimize the sum of the squared residuals. Each observation, minus the predicted value from the model, squared and added up. We minimize that quantity. And this is called the method of least squares. Why would we use this method? Well, it has some very nice properties, including the fact that if the error terms are normally distributed, it's the best possible line to use. So we've got the least squares criterion here in that we're minimizing the sum of the squared residuals. But we don't yet have formulas for beta naught hat and beta 1 hat. We're going to actually need to work these out when we have sample data. To find the formulas for beta naught hat and beta 1 hat, we would use calculus to find the values that minimize this function. And I'm going to spare you the details here and move on to the actual formulas. First, some notation, SSXX, which we'd call the sum of squares for x. Now, if we think about this a little bit, the variance of the x, so S squared x, our sample variance of our x's, would be equal to the sum of squares for x over n minus 1. And the variance of the y's would be equal to the sum of squares for y over n minus 1. And down here we have what we call the sum of products. And the sum of products is equal to this quantity here. And the covariance between x and y, the sample covariance between x and y, would be equal to the sum of products of x and y over n minus 1. And now we're ready for the formulas. So if we go ahead and do that minimization properly, we would see that beta naught hat is equal to the mean of y minus beta 1 hat times the mean of x. And beta 1 hat is equal to the sum of products over the sum of squares for x. Another way we'd have of writing this is that beta 1 hat is equal to the covariance between x and y divided by the variance of x. Let's look at an example here. This is hardness versus density for 36 Australian tree species. Hardness is the Janka hardness. It's a measure of the durability of the wood, and it's a hard-to-measure variable. And down here we have density, and density is an easy-to-measure variable. So the hope is that we will be able to use density to help predict hardness. 
Now let's fit a least squares regression line through these points. We can do the calculations by hand, but typically we're going to rely on a computer to do it. Here's the output from the statistical software R. Other statistical software give a very similar output to this. This first line is the intercept line, and this second line is the slope line, and it's labeled with the explanatory variable x. Right now our point of interest is simply getting the line, and that's given in this first column. These other values have some meaning for us, but not at this moment. What this line is telling me is that the least squares regression line is y hat is equal to minus 1160.500 plus 57.507 times x. In other words, this is beta naught hat, and this is beta 1 hat. Let's see what that line looks like on the plot. Here's the scatter plot with the least squares regression line superimposed. And it seems like it fits the data reasonably well. And if we wanted to, we could use this line for prediction. So if, say, we had a density value down here somewhere, let's say at 65, we might want to predict the Janka hardness for that, in which case we'd simply put 65 into the regression line and get a predicted value of hardness that falls right on that line. A couple of points about least squares regression. The residuals must sum to zero. Mathematically, every single time, these residuals are going to sum to zero in least squares regression. And also, the line always passes through the point mean of x and mean of y. Here's our wood data once again. And this green point that I plotted in is simply the point mean of x and mean of y. The regression line always passes through that point. And if we took all of the residuals, these vertical distances, positive values if the point's above and negative values if they're below, if we added up all of those residual values, that would add to zero, as it always does in least squares regression.